I thought it would be a good idea to prove with the word of God, what the Lord's will, is, because some believers caught up in false doctrines are confused, and want to narrow it down to being one thing. These people think that believing alone, which they misinterpret as the sole meaning of faith, is full obedience to the will of God. I don't know how they can manage to think this way, given so many scriptures which instruct us clearly on what obedience is. But perhaps, listening to fluff producing ear ticklers on YouTube, is preferable to opening and properly studying their Bibles, or seeking truth from God's Holy Spirit. This is utterly tragic. Why are people not taking their eternity seriously? God's will is that all humans are saved. 2 Peter 3 9, quote, The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long suffering to us ward, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. End quote. 1 Timothy 2, 3 4, quote, For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior, who will have all men to be saved, and to come unto the knowledge of the truth. End quote. To enable our salvation, he gives us the Holy Spirit, whose intention is to guide us, teach us, comfort us, convict us, warn us, and do all he can to keep us on the road to salvation. The narrow road, stated in Matthew 7, 13-14. This is why the Bible teaches constantly of what we must repent of, because the road to destruction is sin, and this is the knowledge of the truth. 1 Thessalonians 4, 3-5, quote, for this is the will of God, even your sanctification, that ye should abstain from fornication, that every one of you should know how to possess his vessel in sanctification and honor, not in the lust of concupiscence, even as the Gentiles which know not God, end quote. As can be seen from those verses, it is our own actions that lead to the sanctification we must achieve to enter heaven. We are being commanded to not fornicate. As it is the will of God that we are sanctified, that means it's not automatic just by believing. Is that all God is telling us? Certainly not. There is plenty more in the same vein, because of course there are a long list of sins and they all lead to eternal death, see Romans 6:21 and more. Romans 12 2, quote, And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good, and acceptable, and perfect, will of God. End quote. We know from many scriptures that we cannot be attached to this world. We are to come out from among them and be separate, see 2 Corinthians 6 17, and that friendship with the world is enmity with God, see James 4 4. God is telling us that it's His will, that we renew our minds, so that we are not living like we used to before, as unbelievers. The Holy Spirit gives us the strength to reject sin but we still have the ability to choose to resist him, see Acts 7 51, we are not robots. See Hebrews 11, 13 to 16 where it is made clear, that we are strangers and pilgrims on earth. That's why Romans 8 13 says, for if ye live after the flesh, ye shall die, but if ye through the spirit do mortify the deeds of the body, ye shall live. That's the Holy Spirit, because we must be born of the spirit to enter heaven, as Jesus explained to Nicodemus at John 3 3. In being a child of God, which we can only be, by walking as children of light, as you will see in Ephesians 5 8 coming up, and there are other such scriptures, we are brethren of Jesus. Mark 3 35, quote, For whosoever shall do the will of God, the same is my brother, and my sister, and mother. End quote. Only those believers who reject willful sin are the children of God. We know this because of 1 John 3, 6 10, quote, Whosoever abideth in him sinneth not, whosoever sinneth hath not seen him, neither known him. Little children, let no man deceive you, he that doeth righteousness is righteous, even as he is righteous. He that committeth sin is of the devil, for the devil sinneth from the beginning. For this purpose the Son of God was manifested, that he might destroy the works of the devil. Whosoever is born of God doth not commit sin, for his seed remaineth in him, and he cannot sin, because he is born of God. In this the children of God are manifest, and the children of the devil, 
Whosoever doeth not righteousness is not of God, neither he that loveth not his brother. End quote. 1 Peter 4 2, quote, That he no longer should live the rest of his time in the flesh to the lusts of men, but to the will of God. End quote. Ephesians 5, 1 11, quote, Be ye therefore followers of God, as dear children, and walk in love, as Christ also hath loved us and hath given himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet-smelling savour. But fornication, and all uncleanness, or covetousness, let it not be once named among you, as becometh saints, neither filthiness, nor foolish talking, nor jesting, which are not convenient, but rather giving of thanks. For this ye know, that no whoremonger, nor unclean person, nor covetous man, who is an idolater, hath any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. Let no man deceive you with vain words, for because of these things cometh the wrath of God upon the children of disobedience. Be not ye therefore partakers with them. For ye were sometimes darkness, but now are ye light in the Lord, walk as children of light, for the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness and righteousness and truth. Proving what is acceptable unto the Lord. And have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. End quote. See also the following verses for details of more sins which will prevent someone entering heaven, 1 Corinthians 6, 9-10, Galatians 5, 19-21, Mark 7, 21-23, 1 Timothy 1, 8-11, 2 Timothy 3, 1 to 5, Romans 1, 29 to 31, and Colossians 3, 4 to 10, but there are more, if you read your Bible. The Bible doesn't necessarily give exhaustive sin lists, but we have common sense as well as a conscience to know what is sin, and what is not. If we have the Holy Spirit, He will convict us and make us not want to sin. If you want to sin, are you sure you have the Holy Spirit? Matthew 3:10. Quote, and now also the axe is laid unto the root of the trees, therefore every tree which bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down, and cast into the fire. End quote. Ephesians 5:17. Wherefore be ye not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. End quote. As we can see, it is the will of God that we walk in righteousness and holiness, rejecting willful sin, and confessing if we slip up along the way. Believers are servants of the Lord and doing His will, should come from within us by nature. Ephesians 6 6, quote, Not with eye service, as men pleasers, but as the servants of Christ, doing the will of God from the heart. End quote. A servant is obedient to his master. And even though this is obvious, Jesus did spell it out in the parables of the wicked servants at Matthew 18, 23 to 35, Matthew 25. 14 to 30 and Luke 19, 12 to 27. 1 Thessalonians 5:18, quote, "In everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you." End quote. See also Colossians 3:17. No matter what we go through, we have a reason to always be thankful, because we have breath in our bodies and we have the way to be saved given to us by Almighty God and we have his Holy Spirit helping us along the way. Jesus told us he would never leave or forsake us. Remember, if we walk onto the broad path to destruction and choose willful sin, that's our doing, it's not the Lord leaving us. 1 Peter 2:15, quote, For so is the will of God, that with well-doing ye may put to silence the ignorance of foolish men. End quote. Unbelievers and disobedient believers are the foolish men, and we will suffer opposition and even mockery, from all those who prefer sin and worldliness. 1 Peter 3:17, quote, For it is better, if the will of God be so, that ye suffer for well-doing, than for evil-doing. End quote. Great is our reward for pursuing the will of God, which is righteousness and holiness and love, most especially if we are persecuted for it, see Acts 5:41. Scriptures are categorical on what will happen to disobedient believers. 1 Peter 4, 16-19, quote, Yet if any man suffer as a Christian, let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify God on this behalf. 
For the time is come that judgment must begin at the house of God, and if it first begin at us, what shall the end be of them that obey not the gospel of God? And if the righteous scarcely be saved, where shall the ungodly and the sinner appear? Wherefore let them that suffer according to the will of God commit the keeping of their souls to him in well-doing, as unto a faithful creator. End quote. When we pray, as righteous believers God's ear is open to our prayers. John 9:31. quote, Now we know that God heareth not sinners, but if any man be a worshipper of God, and doeth his will, him he heareth. End quote. He will grant us what we ask, only if it aligns with his will. 1 John 5:14. quote, And this is the confidence that we have in him, that, if we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. End quote. We must have the fear of the Lord, to reverence him and submit ourselves to him, see James 4 7. Philippians 2, 12 13, quote, Wherefore, my beloved, as ye have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. For it is God which worketh in you both to will, and to do of his good pleasure. End quote. Hebrews 13, 20 to 21, quote, Now the God of peace, that brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well pleasing in his sight, through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory for ever and ever. Amen. End quote. The fear of God is the beginning of wisdom. See Psalm 111.10. Ephesians 5.17, quote, Wherefore be ye not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. End quote. Jesus came and taught what Father God told him. Let's not listen to nonsense that Apostle Paul had a different gospel. There is one gospel and one church. Everything Jesus taught, Paul taught likewise. John 12.49-50, Quote, For I have not spoken of myself, but the Father which sent me, he gave me a commandment, what I should say, and what I should speak. And I know that his commandment is life everlasting, whatsoever I speak therefore, even as the Father said unto me, so I speak. End quote. This means, that what the Father told Jesus, will result in life everlasting. So everything Jesus taught, which is confirmed here. Matthew 28, 19 to 20, quote, Go ye therefore, and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you, and, lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. End quote. The following scriptures spell out that unless we do the will of God, which you have already seen is righteousness, holiness, love, bearing fruit, and obedience, we will not be saved. Matthew 7, 13-23, quote, Enter ye in at the straight gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way, that leadeth to destruction, and many there be which go in thereat, because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way, which leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. Beware of false prophets, which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. Ye shall know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes of thorns, or figs of thistles? Even so every good tree bringeth forth good fruit, but a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit, neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. Every tree that bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down, and cast into the fire. Wherefore by their fruits ye shall know them. Not every one that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? And in thy name have cast out devils? And in thy name done many wonderful works? And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you, depart from me ye that work iniquity." End quote. Hebrews 10, 36-39, quote, For ye have need of patience, that, 
after ye have done the will of God, ye might receive the promise. For yet a little while, and he that shall come will come, and will not tarry. Now the just shall live by faith, but if any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. But we are not of them who draw back unto perdition, but of them that believe to the saving of the soul. End quote. 1 John 2:17. quote, And the world passeth away, and the lust thereof, but he that doeth the will of God abideth for ever. End quote. Only those who do the will of God receive the promise of eternal life as these scriptures prove beyond any shadow of a doubt. As you can see, just as the Lord has many commandments, the will of God is not one thing. His will revolves around all that is good and all that will lead to us being his children and receiving eternal salvation. This is why he warns us against sin, through his word. All scriptures are Holy Spirit inspired, so all the commandments and warnings are the Lord's will, for all of us. This is why as you have seen from the previous scriptures, he commands us to, repent of and reject sin and the flesh, bear fruit, do good works, walk by the Spirit in the light of holiness and righteousness, obey the gospel, give thanks to God and know these things are his will, and of course, the truth. We have seen by his own holy scriptures that unless we do these things, we will not receive eternal life. Amen.